Hi and thank you for joining us here tonight. My name is Pastor Mark and this is Victory Outreach Glasgow. That today marks our fourth week of doing online services. And man, we've been having a great time connecting with you. So tonight we have a great service lined up for you. But tonight we want to start with worshipping Jesus. And this week our worship comes all the way from our family there in Victory Outreach Amsterdam International Church. My family, we were privileged to play a small part in the early beginning of that church. And we've got lots of great friends there. And we believe that God has a great plan for the Victory Outreach Amsterdam International family. So listen, just let's just stand to our feet. Let's just prepare our hearts as we worship tonight and enjoy our worship music all the way from Amsterdam. God bless you. Outreach Glasgow, we're excited to worship the Lord with you here at Victory Outreach Amsterdam International Church. So wherever you're at, stand up, begin to give God a shout of praise because we're going to worship him this morning in spirit and in truth.
Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. And even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when, and even when I don't see it, you're working. Hey, even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. Amen. So what a powerful song. Waymaker, miracle worker, light in the darkness. Yeah. And you know, I don't know about you, but in this season, we need the waymaker, mm. the miracle worker and the light in the darkness. You know, I really felt the Spirit of God ministering through that song. And mm. I believe that even before we start the service, I just want to say a prayer for you. Mm. That if you need the Lord right now, a special touch of the Lord, just throw your hands up right now. We're just going to pray. Father, I pray this mm. evening in the name of Jesus my God, that you would move through every hand that's lifted. Lord, hands that are lifted in faith. Mm. My God, that need the way maker, that need the miracle worker, that need your light in this dark season. My God, I pray that you would touch every single person watching right now. My God, through the power of your Holy Spirit, touch them, Lord. Heal them, Lord. Strengthen them. Mm. Father, we thank you right now. We give this service mm. to you. We pray for miracles and great things to happen. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. That was beautiful worship. We were so blessed by it, by, by our Victory Outreach Amsterdam International family. And it's just, we want to welcome you again. It's great to be back <clears> here again on the Sunday evenings and having service. And just want to encourage you just to share this with somebody. Mm. Maybe share the link, share the Facebook Live link. Soon we're going to start putting our services on YouTube as yes. well. So that other people can watch it throughout the week or on a recap. And even just let us know where you're watching from this evening. And you know what? We've had an amazing week. We've had some great times of Bible study. We've had some amazing times of prayer. Mm. 
locking in with the church here in yeah. Glasgow and locking in with our region and praying for our nation and praying for the world in the situation that we're in right now. And at this point, we just want to show you what's happening this week. There's so many things that you can just get plugged into devotions yeah. in the morning. Yes. We've been having great reports and testimonies, how people have been encouraged to just step up throughout the day and to arise in their faith. So here's what you can get involved in this week. Here is what's on this week at Victory Outreach Glasgow. This Monday at 7pm, we continue our study through the Book of Acts. This week we will be looking at the Acts of the Apostles, Miracles, Signs and Wonders. On Wednesday evening at 7pm, we will meet again for midweek prayer. Join us for a time of worship, prayer and breakthrough. Together with our Victory Outreach International family from around the world, we are part of a 24-hour global prayer chain. We as a church, VO Glasgow, come together every Wednesday morning at 8am and on Friday morning together with our UK, Germany region for a time of prayer and intercession. For a word of encouragement or a faith boost, join us and join Pastor Mark on Facebook Live every Tuesday and Thursday morning at 8am for morning devotion. All Bible studies and prayer meetings will be held through Zoom. Please visit our website voglasgow.com for all login details. If you or someone you know has any physical or spiritual need, please feel free to connect with us for prayer, conversation or to see how we can help with any other needs. Our buildings might be shut, but the church is very much alive. We have exciting news for you today. We are bringing World Conference to you via YouTube and Facebook. With some of our special speakers from our past World Conferences, like who? David, David Wilkerson, Wilkerson, Jim Simbola, John Hagee, Reinhard Bunke. And the best of the best, Pastor Sonny Argonzoni. Hey, Ben, <laughs> that's when? That's going to be May 11th through May 15th. That's Monday through Friday, 2020. Now, this does not take the place of our World Conference next year at 2021 at the Anaheim Convention Center. So as you can see by our announcements, you can see that we've got a lot of stuff going on. But I just want to pay a special attention to the last announcement that you saw. And that was our online experience World Conference that's coming up beginning on Monday. You know, Victory Outreach is an international ministry with churches all over the world and we have a real rich heritage. And this online experience is going to show some of the international speakers that we've had at World Conferences in the past. We have David Wilkerson, John Hagee, Reinhard Bonke, and our very own founder, Pastor Sonny Arganzoni Sr. So it's going to be an amazing time. Listen, just keep, keep, keep watching for more details. Uh, it begins on Monday night, so it's going to be a great time. And this brings me into the part of the service that we're going to take up our, our giving and our offering. You know, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 that God loves a faith, a cheerful giver. And, you know, even in the midst of the, the, the life and the, the madness that we find ourselves in right now, we can still be cheerful. We can still be cheerful because of all God's done for us. Thankful because all of He's given us. And we can give tonight with a smile on our face and a cheerful heart. So you can give of your tithes and your offerings by visiting our website at voglasgow.com forward slash give. In fact, just on my phone here, I just gave just before we came online. And you can do it on your phone there just by visiting the giving link. You can give and it's safe and secure. And you can give right there, wherever it is that you're watching. So feel free to use our website. And with that, I just want to say a prayer. I just want to Offer this to the Lord, and I want to pray a special blessing over you. But before that, I just want to really just take a minute just to thank the people that have already been giving. The givers, the tithers, the faithful ones that have been giving offerings already to Victory Outreach Glasgow. Thank you so much. You're investing into a great soil. So, Father, thank you tonight. I pray that you would bless the offering. Father, bless those tonight who are giving. And Father, make a way for those tonight that are 
that are not able to give. We offer this to you, my God, that you would take it, you would multiply it for the work of your kingdom. We love you tonight, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Welcome back to part two of the In Between series. And again, my name is Pastor Mark, you've just joined, and uh, this is the In Between series. And I've named it the In Between series is because we are not at the beginning of this COVID-19, but we're not quite at the end of it either. So we're somewhere in between right now. And last week I spoke on uh, Joseph and the story of Joseph and the different seasons of Joseph and seeing how God was with him all the way through to the end and it was encouraging to find out that you know through Joseph's even through Joseph's darkest moments and God was still there and Joseph was still faithful and loyal to the Lord and the Lord was able to take him through so I pray tonight that as we read go through the book of Daniel tonight as we look at Daniel that we would be encouraged by the exampleship of Daniel that even though he went through some horrendous things God was with him in the midst of every season every trial I want to pray for us right now that we would ask this for the blessing of God's word. Heavenly Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. We ask for the blessing of your word. God, that I would decrease, that you would increase. My God, I ask and pray for the ministry of your Holy Spirit to take over. And Lord, even as, as you've filled me, I pray for those watching tonight. My God, that God, you would open their ears as I believe this is a word in season for us, God. You would help us tonight understand in Jesus name bind every bit of distraction right now in Jesus name amen so firstly we're going to look at some background into Babylon we see in Daniel chapter 1 that, that he finds himself in Babylon as a, a captive and so we're going to just do a little background work about a little bit of background look into Babylon because I think it'll really help us understand um, where where the story goes uh, just like any good movie, any good series, um, you know, they always give you just a little bit of background, building up the story, you know, and that's kind of like what I'm doing here. I'm just kind of building up the story with a bit of history, a little bit of background that will be able to help us further than the message. <clears throat> now, Babylon was first mentioned in the Bible in Genesis chapter 11. And I'm going to read a few verses here <clears throat> from Genesis chapter 11. I'm going to be reading from the New Living Translation. And it says here in verse 1, at one time, all the people of the world spoke the same language and used the same words. As the people migrated to the east, they found a plain in the land of Babylonia and settled there. They began saying to each other, let us make bricks and harden them with fire. In this region, bricks were used instead of stone and tar was used instead of mortar. Then they said, there's an... Then they said, come let us build a great city for ourselves with a tower that reaches up into the sky. This will make us famous and keep us from being scattered all over the world. So this is the first time that uh, Babylon was mentioned in the Bible in Genesis chapter 11. But we see just a few chapters before that in Genesis chapter 9 that uh, Noah and the flood had just receded and that God had given them a new command. And the command was to be fruitful, to multiply and repopulate the earth. Because I mean, you know, the flood, the flood washed away with the old. And this was a new season. And God had given them a new promise that he would never again um, do what he had just done to the earth. It was a new season of repopulating the earth. So we move forward just a couple of chapters to Genesis chapter 11 then. We see the here that the people in Genesis chapter 11, they've all came from the, the, the family of Noah. They've, they've all came from Noah's family. Noah's family was the only one on the ark. So they've all came from that. And what we see is that the people that came from the, the, the family of Noah, from, from the flood, they, they park themselves up in Babylon. 
and it's in direct disobedience to the God to the Lord's command because God's command was to go into all the earth and repopulate but they find themselves holed up here in Babylon and there was a it was believed that there's a man named Nimrod <clears throat> and Nimrod's name means rebel to rebel and he was responsible for uh, est establishing Babylon basically and he was leading the people away from God into a, a, into a mindset of self-reliance and self-confidence, basically taking God out of the picture, basically saying, listen, let's build ourselves a kingdom without God. We don't need God. We don't need God in our lives. We want to build ourselves something that we're proud of, build ourselves something that we can look at and be proud of. He, he was trying to change their mindset to be self-reliant, to be self-confident, that their own works were sufficient, that their strength came from their own courage and their own confidence, and he was attempting to take God completely out of the picture. Does that sound familiar? Does that kind of sound like a maybe a world that we live in today where there's people behind the scenes, because it says here in Genesis that it says they said to themselves, let us build a tower. But, you know, there's always an instigator. There's, uh, there's always somebody who first plants the seed, there's always somebody who says the first word. And we know that the enemy is behind the spread of the kingdom of God. And he'll try anything to stop the spread of the kingdom. And this is what we see here in the Babel, in Babylonian, that, that, Nimrod, that Nimrod rises up. The Bible says that he was a great warrior. He was the strongest warrior on earth. And, and it says that he also established Babylon. He also established Nineveh. And if you look at these two cities, you see that these were godless cities, man. You see, Nineveh was the place that Jonah was to go to and preach repentance because it was so wicked. This is the same guy who, who established these two cities. He was a godless man. And, and, you know, he came from the lineage, but he went his own way and he disobeyed God. And when Nimrod died, his mother claimed that he had been a god. And people started offering prayers to him and people started offering prayers to her. And she became a high priestess for many false religions and for many occult worship practices. And all false religions began from the Tower of Babel. And when the Lord scarred them, they took the seeds of the false religions with them. Seeds that have continued to be planted throughout the world ever since. The ideas and the forms of these seeds have been altered and adapted, but at the basic root of all of it is the same. Rebellion from God. <clears throat> That's why in the book of Revelation, chapter 17, verse 5, we see that Babylon is called the mother of all harlots and the abomination of the earth. She is the progenitor of all, first, all false religion, meaning that every false religion has its root tied to Babylon. That's why God hates it so much because it was a place of rebellion and a place of occult worship and a place of, you know, people turning, people being turned their eyes from God and placed upon themselves. And so this is where we find Daniel. This is where we find him at this time. So, you know, just giving you that little bit of background history because it's good to know where he finds himself. He finds himself in a godless place. He finds himself in a place of occult worship. He finds himself where, where many gods have been worshipped. He finds himself where the true God has been pushed aside and, and anyone worshipping the true God begins to start getting persecuted. Hello, somebody. The, these things sound very, very similar. So this is where he finds himself and this is where we pick the story up in Daniel chapter 1. Now I want to give us three keys from the life of Daniel and from the book of Daniel that I think are going to be really, really crucial as we navigate this next season of our lives. The first key is, is that Daniel made decisions based on his convictions rather than his circumstances. That he made decisions based on his convictions rather than his circumstances. I'm going to read from Daniel chapter 1, verses 1, uh, sorry, Daniel chapter 1, verses 3 to 8. And it says this, it says, Then the king ordered Asphenaz, the chief of staff, to bring to the palace some of the young men of Judah's royal family. They were from Judah. 
Remember, Judah means praise. Just keep that in the back of your mind. Uh, he called them. Uh, they were. To, they, it says, select only the strong, healthy, and good-looking men. I'd imagine that they would have called for me back in the day. <laughs> I'm only joking. Make sure that they were well-versed in every branch of learning and gifted with knowledge and good judgment and are suited to serve in the royal palace. Train these young men in the language and literature of Babylon. Basically saying, look, take these men, uh, take these men from Judah and retrain them, reprogram them to think like us. The king assigned them a daily ration of food and wine from his own kitchens and they were to be trained for three years and then they would enter into royal service. Daniel, Hanani, Mishael and Azari were four of the young men chosen all from the tribe of Judah. The chief of staff renamed them with these Babylonian names. Daniel was called Belshazzar, Hanani was called Shadrach, Mishael was called Mishka and Azari was called Abednego. But Daniel in verse 8 says, But Daniel was determined not to defile himself by eating the food and the wine given to him by the king. Now it says here, right in the very beginning here, it says that these men were from Judah. And we know from you know study and personal things that Judah means praise. So what we see here in the very beginning of, of Daniel chapter 1 is we see that these men had been stripped from their country. They had been stripped of their names, identity. They were trying to be reprogrammed. But you know what? You can take man out of Judah, but you can't take Judah out of man. You can close the church, but you can't stop the church from getting its praise on. You can take me from the, from the church, but I'm still going to get my praise on. You can't take my praise. You can take my clothes. You can take my house, you can take my car, but nobody can take your praise. Come on, somebody say, nobody can take my praise. There came a time in his life when convictions were tested to the maximum. He couldn't control the circumstances around him, but he could control his choices. And Daniel chose to act according to his values. We see here in verse 8 that he said he desired in his heart not to defile himself. Basically what he was saying was, he says, you know what, I don't know where this is coming from. I don't know the origin of this food. I don't know what's in it. Is it spiked? Is, is, is it poison? But what he was saying was, he said, you know what, I may be in this circumstance. I may be in this situation, but I'm going to dictate and I'm going to choose what I put in to my body. And this is the world that we live in right now. We've been given information and, and we're having all these things uh, told to us and saying, you know, we must do this and we must do this. But every one of us, like Daniel, must have conviction and must make choices based on them rather than based on the circumstances. David had what I call walk away, uh, sorry, Daniel had what I call walk away conditions. Basically what it was, Daniel lived by a set of conditions and, and although they were there in Babylon and you know they were going to be trained and they were going to be re-educated, Daniel had this thing in his mind that he knew, he goes, you know what, I'll go so far, but then I'll stop. You know, I'll allow myself to go along so far, but then there's a condition, I have conditions when I walk away. I have conditions when I say enough is enough. I'm not walking this way anymore. I have conditions in my life, I have values and principles and convictions in my life where I say, you know what, I've gone, I've gone as far as I can go. I can't go any further. This is why I believe that it's in a crucial moment, this is a crucial portion of scripture, this is a crucial uh, uh, lesson from Daniel, is that we're going to be faced with decisions coming up that we're going to have to choose what we allow to take into our body and we're going to have to allow what we allow into our vicinity. There's going to come a time soon when we're have, going to have to decide what we allow to come into our body. There's going to come a time soon when we're going to, have to make, going to have to make tough choices based upon convictions and not upon circumstances. And there's going to come a time soon when we, ha when we have to purpose in our heart that we will not, that we will not defile us. We're going to have to purpose in our heart what we will allow and what we won't, what we will disallow. Daniel chapter 1 verse 8, it said, Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself. He purposed in his heart, man. He goes, you know what, man, I, I may be here and, you know, I'm, all these things are happening. But you know what? 
this body's a temple. And God lives in this. And I'm only going to put in this, I'm only going to allow in to my life things that I know that are good for me, that are healthy, that are going to glorify God, that are going to help me remain loyal to God and faithful to God. He said in verse 12 of Daniel chapter 1, he said, Please test your servants for 10 days. He's talking about to eating vegetables. This is where we get Daniel fast from. And this is, you know, Daniel said, you know, let us just eat vegetables and drink water for 10 days. Then test us after this to see that if we're not wiser, stronger and fitter than those that were eating food from the king's kitchen. And, you know, the number 10 is used over 242 times in the Bible. And, and here's just some of, the, some of the examples are we have the Ten Commandments. We have the Ten Plagues of Egypt. We have the 10% tithe. We have 10 times in Genesis chapter 1 where it said, God said. It was on the 10th day of the month that the Passover lamb was chosen. You know, there's many different things. The number 10 in the Bible, it stands for God's authority, it stands for obedience, and it stands for testimony. So in the midst of this culture, in the midst of the season, what Daniel was saying is, he goes, look, I find myself in this situation and these circumstances, and I can't change that. But what I will do is I'm going to stand in the authority that God's given me, I'm going to be obedient to God, and I'm going to maintain my testimony. Come on, somebody. I'm not allowed, going to allow this culture. I'm not going to allow everything else to dictate to me. I've got my body. I've got my life. I've got my family. I've got me and my beside me. We're going to serve the Lord. We're going to decide what comes in we're going to decide what we eat we're going to decide what we drink we're going to decide we're going to stand man in the biblical authority we're going to stand in obedience to God and we're going to guard our testimony because how many know that we overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony and you know what there's people out there that are still lost and still broken and still bound and they need to hear overcoming testimonies come on somebody I know I'm preaching to somebody watching right now that you may be going through a season and your convictions and your values are being challenged but I want to encourage you right now honor the Lord stay loyal to God because God will stay faithful to you key number two is you will never be prepared for everything but in every situation God will bring you through come on how many can say amen to that you will never be prepared for every situation but in every situation God will bring you through Daniel chapter 3 verse 15 to 18 says this, it says, I will give you one more chance to bow down and worship the statue I have made when you hear the sound of the musical instruments. But if you refuse, you will be thrown immediately into the blazing furnace. And then what God will be able to rescue you from my power? Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego replied, O Nebuchadnezzar, we do not have to defend ourselves before you. It says, if we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God whom we serve is able to save us. Come on, somebody. He will rescue us from your power, your majesty. But even if he doesn't, we want to make this clear to you, your majesty, that we will never serve your gods or worship the gold statue which you have set up. Man, you know what Daniel in chapter 1, he said, I'm not going to defile myself. And in, in chapter 3, he said, I don't need to defend myself. I don't need to defend myself. I don't need to defend their actions. I've got my choices. I've got my convictions. I'm happy with them. I don't need to defend myself. I don't need to start kicking off and fighting and throwing things around because I know my God will save me. I know my God will be with me. And even if he's not with me, even if he's not, I'll tell you what, I'm going to go to heaven knowing that I've not bowed down to your culture, that I've not given in, come on somebody, that I've not worshipped false statues because I worship the only living God in Jesus Christ. We don't need to bow down to nothing else apart from the name of Jesus because everything else bows down to his name. The challenge Daniel and his colleagues faced was being assimilated into this culture at the expense of their loyalty to God. Let me read that to you again. The challenge that they faced was being assimilated at the expense of their loyalty to God. In the Webster's Dictionary, the word assimilate, one of the one, one, one of the descriptions of it is it means to be to adopt the ways of a different culture. To assimilate is like a process of bringing people through. To assimilate, like that's where we get the word assimilation. And the problem was is that they were in this new culture and they were trying they were being assimilated into that culture and 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 expected 
to not only learn the culture, not only, you know, uh, learn the history, but they were also uh, expected to live with their values and their standards also. Daniel and his friends had to accept changes in their everyday life. Nevertheless, Daniel and his colleagues embraced the challenge, secure in the belief that God would protect their faith and loyalty. The current government in Daniel's time tried to stop him praying and worshipping by making laws to prohibit anything that did not fall in line with their agenda. Do these things sound similar in any way? But nevertheless, Daniel and his friends accepted that changes were going to have to be made in their everyday life. They embraced the challenge, secure in the belief and faith and confidence in God that he would protect them because of their faith and of their loyalty. Again, we may not be able to control everything that surrounds us, but we can control our reaction. We can't always control the circumstances, but we can control our values, our ethics, and our convictions. We don't need to bow down to anything apart from the Lord Jesus Christ. Now we see through Daniel's story here that Daniel was a prayerful man. He was a prayer warrior. He prayed three times a day. He was a committed man of God. And because he bowed before God, he could stand before men. For if God be with him, who could be against him? You know, this is what a, this is what a consistent prayer life gives us. You know, we don't overcome obstacles and temptation because we prayed this morning. We overcome obstacles and temptation because of the deposits we've made day after day after day. When those big giants come and those big trials come, it's because of all the prayers we've put in. It's because of all the prayer life, the times of God, the times of prayer. We overcome because of our dependence on God, not upon our own effectiveness or because of our own courage. We overcome because of a deep-rooted uh, determination and knowledge that God is for us because of our healthy prayer lives. My prayer life personally has helped me many times. There's been many times where I've thought I'm going to throw in the towel. I'm going to leave. Man, I've been to the bottom. I've been in situations where I've felt like Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, crushed under the pressure and saying, Lord, I can't take this no more. But nevertheless, Lord, your will be done. Nevertheless, Less, Lord, I know that through you I can do all things. That your word says that you will never leave me nor forsake me. That God, if you kept me here, if you rescued me here, if you were with me here, then I know you're going to be with me here. And I want to let you know this morning that if God has been with you before, He's still with you. When God was with you, come on, somebody, how many know God is with us? Right now, Daniel had a prayer life. I committed three times a day prayer life. Come on, somebody. Some of us, we don't even pray three times a week. Hallelujah. Or maybe in this season, we're praying three times a day, but we're praying for our food. How many know we're eating lots in this season? But he bowed down before God, which meant that he could stand confidently before men. Even in chapter six, when he was thrown into the lion's den, God kept him. God was with him. Listen, you'll never be prepared for every situation, but in every situation, God is there and God is with you. Can I get an amen? And key number three, God was in it from the beginning. <laughs> God was in it from the beginning. You know, God's never, God's never caught off guard. Uh, God is never hoodwinked. And God was in this from the beginning in Daniel chapter 1 we see that God had his hands in the event of the events of Daniel's life it says that in Daniel chapter 1 verse 2 it says the Lord gave the victory uh, to uh, to the king and also the Lord let King Jehoiakim of Judah fall the Lord allowed these things to happen the Lord gave victory to a certain king, and also in Daniel chapter 1 verse 9, it says, God allowed Daniel to receive favour and compassion. I want to let you know this morning that God is in this with you. That God is in this with you. He's been in this with you from the beginning. 
God has his hands in the event of your life. I want to let you know that God knows your beginning from your end. He is the Alpha and the Omega. Listen, he's the in-between. He knew you when you were in your mother's womb. He's going to know you when you get older. He knows, ah, listen, God is with you. He's been, he was with Daniel from the beginning and he is with you from the beginning also. One thing we can learn from Daniel is, is that he was able to speak. Now listen, he was able to speak boldly with humility. In room full of in rooms full of different people, with different conversations going on, with different directions, and he was able to feel like something wasn't right in his gut. But he had the, the he had the determination to say, "I see it differently," and here's why. And this is what we need: we need the courage and the boldness to be able, and the humility. Actually, the general. Uh, General Peter P- Peter Pace, a former chairman of the U.S. military, a joint chief of staff, said, "He says what I've come to really admire is something I call intellectual courage. It's being able to sit in a room full of people and listen to a debate and listen to all the different angles, but then be peaceful enough in your heart and determined enough in your heart to say, I hear everything you're saying with complete humility, but I disagree, and here's why." My pastor always told me one time, he said, before you can say you disagree, you must be able to say you understand. And with with all this in, in Daniel's time and even in our time as well, there's many different things going on. And, and, you know, a lot of the information we're given, it has to be, we have to listen to it. We have to be able to say with a conviction that I hear what you're saying, but I disagree. Or I hear what you're saying and I agree. We can't just say we disagree with something without fully understanding something. That's not intellectual intelligence. Uh, Intellectual courage, excuse me. So we need to know our why. We need to know our why. We need to know our what. We need to know what is our walkaway condition. Again, our walkaway condition is, you know what, I'll accept this for so long, but I won't go past this part. I draw a line in the sand and I won't step over it. That is a walkaway condition. Daniel had these in his life. He had walkaway conditions. He said, I'm not, you're not going to take my prayer life from me. You're not going to take my worship life from me. You're not going to be able to put anything inside of me without me saying it's my choice, without me allowing it inside of me. He had walkaway conditions. And you know what? Daniel stuck to them walk away conditions and God was able to take him through different seasons of his life God was able to take him through the fiery furnace come on somebody he was in the midst of the fiery furnace the heat was at its hottest the trial was at its worst and then he looked around and then Daniel said I saw someone in the midst of the furnace beside me and he looked like the son of man hello somebody I may know that even in the midst of the fire even when the storm is raging even when it's at its warmest God is right there with us. Even when he was in the lion's den, he said, you know what? God brought me through the fiery furnace. I'm going to stand here in my peace. I'm going to stand here with my heart. I'm going to stand here in my right mind. I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to let the Lord fight my battles. If he's did it before, he's going to do it again. Come on, somebody say amen. In the end, God does bring the evil kingdoms to an end. God's final victory is the great hope of God's people. God coming back for his people again in the end. And by all means, wherever we find ourselves planted, we should try and make changes. We should try and make the most of opportunities when they arise. We should try and make a difference. In fact, what we see through the story of Daniel is we see engagement and not withdrawal. Sometimes as Christians, we just want to withdraw and stick our heads in the sand or we just want to withdraw and, you know, kid on it's not happening. But in Daniel, we see here that he was willing to engage. He was willing to offer his opinion. He was off, off, He was willing to stand up and say, listen, I hear what you're saying, but here, will you listen to what I'm saying? And engagement, I feel, always brings better results than withdrawal. Come on, somebody. Ultimately, at the end, the question will be, whose side are we on? Whose side are we on? Daniel's success in bringing about change demonstrates that God cares about everyday issues in a broken society.
The New Testament speaks of a value of perseverance. In James chapter 1 verse 12 it said, Blessed is anyone who endures temptation. Such a one has stood the test and will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love them. So perseverance in the life of a believer has its base and its root in the Lord. It's not a matter of human integrity or honour, but Christian endurance rests its foundation on the accuracy and the truthfulness of God's promises. Our endurance, the foundation of our endurance and the foundation of our pers uh, perseverance rests upon the promises and the faithfulness of God. That's how we can persevere. That's how we can make it to the end. Because we trust in the Lord. We trust in God. Daniel had a vision of the end times. And in the last few verses of the chapter 12 and the whole book of Daniel, he asked God this question. He said, although I've heard, I did not understand of the visions that he saw. Then I said, my Lord, what shall be in the end of these things? And in verse 13 of Daniel 12, the Lord says, But you, Daniel, go your way until the end, for you shall rest and will arise to your inheritance at the end of the days. This is saying, you know what, there's so many different things going on right now with the end times, we're hearing all these things about the different age, different times we're in. And I believe in that, I believe that we are in an age and a time where, where we're going to be asked to compromise as Christians, where we have to make tough choices based upon convictions. We're going to have a walk away condition where we know, you know what, I'll go so far, but I won't go any further. We need this in the times that we're coming up. And I believe that Jesus is coming back again. I don't believe it's going to be right now, although I don't know the time. But I believe there's still some things that have to play out first. But one thing I do know is that we do know we, we do need perseverance and we do need the Lord in this season. And but what the Lord was saying to Daniel there in the last chapter of his book, he was saying, Daniel, Daniel was wanting to know everything that's going on, every detail about everything. He said, Daniel, go your way till the end. He said, There's, you shall rest and you'll arise in your inheritance. Basically, what he was saying was, he was saying, don't necessarily get entangled in everything that's going on. He said, just keep your eyes on me. Keep your eyes on me. Keep focused on me. Here's a few points from Daniel 12, uh, 12 and verse 13. Every man has a way to go. Every man has an end. There is rest provided for the people of God. And there is an inheritance for the people of God. At the end of John, the Gospel of John, chapter 21, uh, Jesus told Peter about his destiny to die as a martyr for Jesus. And Peter wanted to know John's destiny. So he asked Jesus, he said, so what about John? Essentially, Jesus replied and said, Peter, what happens to him is none of your business. You follow me. And you know what? I want to just kind of wrap this up right now. That is, you know what? We've been listening to this. We've been listening to Daniel. We've been listening to the signs of the times. You've been listening to the convictions that we're going to have to make. Some hard choices that we're going to have to make in this time. But you know what? We finish up here at the end of Daniel and it says, you know what? Every man has his way to go. Every man has an end. You know, we all have our way. We all have an end. But for those of us that are believers, there's rest provided for us. And there's an inheritance waiting for us at the other end. Let's not spend all of our time speculating on every detail. But let's not worry about all the different things that we don't know. Instead, we should simply just continue to follow the Lord. Stay close to him. And we'll make it to the end through perseverance. And we'll see that glorious day when Jesus comes back again for his children in the end. You know what? Wherever you're standing right now, wherever you're seating right now, I just want to pray for you. I want to give you the opportunity to respond to Jesus. You know, in this age that we're living in, you know what? Every one of us have a day to, to die. We were born and a day will die. You know, some of us, like me, have already made that decision that I'm a Christian, that I believe that after death, that I'm going to be with heaven, I'm going to go to heaven, that, that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord, that there's going to come a time when Jesus is going to come, and he's going to come and take everybody back from earth, he's going to come back for his children. Do you have that security? Do you know that in your life? Have you accepted Jesus? Have you given him an opportunity? Because there'll come an end one day, and listen, we never want to be too late, we never want to say, well, I'll deal with it later. 
but then had never have the opportunity to accept Jesus. So I want to pray for you right now, wherever you are. You say, Pastor, I want to accept Jesus. I see the times coming. I see the changes coming. I see what this COVID-19 and all these things around it, I see them happening. And I want to give my life to Jesus. I want that assurance for my life. I have, I have car insurance. I have health insurance. I have insurance for my house. But now I want insurance for my life. Come on, if that's you right now, I want you to lift your hands wherever you are. I feel the presence of God as I'm saying these things. Lord, I pray for those watching tonight, my God, who do not have that assurance that God, when that moment comes and life ends, that they go to be with you in heaven. God, I pray for those right now that their hearts would turn to you. And if that's you, if you're listening, if you're watching me tonight, I want you just to say these words. I want you to say, Jesus, come into my life. Oh, give me that, give me that, uh, that, that confidence that when all this is over, I'm going to be with you. Oh, let me live a certain way. Let me give my heart to you and focus my life on you. I repent of my sin, my selfishness, my ways, and I turn my life over to you. I ask you, come in, God. Come in, Jesus. Be my savior. Be my very best friend. Wash me in your blood and forgive me of my sins. Fill me with your Holy Spirit that I may have the power to walk through and the perseverance to continue. Oh, and I pray this in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hey, if you just prayed that, man, I want to let you know that's the best prayer you've ever prayed. And, you know, welcome. Welcome, if you've said that with a, a sincere heart. Welcome into the body of Christ. And, you know, for those tonight uh, that are watching that you're part of a church and but you're just going through this season and you're un you're, you're unsure of the times, I want to let you know that God is with you in this time. That God will never leave you nor forsake you. Just as he was like Daniel from the beginning. He was with them in the fiery furnace. He was with them in the lion's den. He was with them in the end. I want to let you know that God will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Even though the fire seems like it's raging right now. Even though the lions may seem like they're roaring right now. God will bring victory in your life if you stay loyal and faithful to him. Father, I pray bless every viewer, every watcher tonight in the name of Jesus. Give us perseverance. Let us keep our eyes firmly fixed on you. My God, let us make strong decisions with our convictions. God, let us know our why. Let us know our what. Let us know what is our walk away conditions as we move through this new age, as we come out of this season and into a victorious season. We give you thanks and praise tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Wow. Wow. Well, listen, tonight, thank you so much for tuning in. Again, my name is Pastor Mark. This is Victory Outreach Glasgow. And you know what? Very shortly, you're going to see a, uh, you're going to see a slide coming up with more details on how you can connect. Please connect with us. Let us know. If you've just responded and accepted Jesus as your Savior, congratulations. Drop us a message. Let us know. And we'll get in touch with you straight away and give you some more information on your decision. Again, thank you so much for watching. God bless your night and have an amazing week that's coming up. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Hallelujah, we worship you, Lord. We worship you. And even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. And even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. Hallelujah, you never stop, you never stop working.